Humans warned the Galactic Council. We told them to run while they still could, but they betrayed us instead. Now they will pay the price. James Adams stood before the Council, his navy blue suit pressed, the United Earth Federation emblem proudly displayed on his chest, sweat beaded on his forehead, his heart pounded. Everything humanity worked for hinged on this moment. This speech, this plea for help against the Ferengi attacks, the ruthless aliens slaughtered human colonists, enslaved survivors, destroyed their homes, all while the Galactic Council turned a blind eye. James gripped the podium, knuckles white. He stared at the impassive alien faces before him, the wizened Chancellor, the reptilian Ferengi representative Murloc, others from a dozen worlds, all silent, judging, humanity's fate in their hands. James took a deep breath. It was time to make them understand the severity of the unprovoked Ferengi aggression, time to demand action, sanctions, justice under the Galactic Charter, time to save the human race from annihilation. James opened his mouth to speak. The future of humanity hung in the balance. James Adams felt the weight of humanity's fate pressing down on him as he made the long journey back to Earth. The Council's betrayal stung like salt in an open wound. They had turned their backs on humanity in its darkest hour, leaving them to face the Ferengi threat alone. James stood before the United Earth Federation leadership, his face grim as he delivered the news. President Michael Novak slammed his fist on the table, his face twisted with anger. The top military brass exchanged looks of disbelief and outrage. Those bastards! They're leaving us to die, President Novak shouted. What are we supposed to do now? James took a deep breath. We take matters into our own hands. He laid out his plan, bold and daring, a strike at the very heart of the Ferengi Empire. Cripple their military capabilities. Force them to the negotiating table. It was a gamble, but it was the only way. President Novak shook his head. This could lead to a full-scale galactic war. Are you sure about this, James? James met the President's gaze. It's the only way to ensure the survival of our species. We have no choice. The room fell silent. The weight of the decision hung heavy in the air. Finally, President Novak nodded. All right, let's do it. The UEF mobilized its forces, calling upon the best and brightest from across the human colonies. Among them was Captain Alexander Stark, a battle-hardened veteran with a reputation for tactical brilliance and unorthodox strategies. James and Captain Stark pored over intelligence reports and analyzed the Ferengi's defenses. They identified a critical weakness in the enemy's supply lines, a heavily guarded space station that served as a hub for their military logistics. Take it out, and the Ferengi's ability to wage war would be crippled. As the UEF fleet assembled in Earth orbit, James received an unexpected visitor, a cloaked figure named Zaxxon, a representative of the mysterious Shadowkin race. Zaxxon offered a deal, advanced weapons technology, in exchange for intelligence on the Ferengi's defences and key military installations. James was wary. The Shadowkin were unpredictable, their motives unclear, but their technology could give the UEF a significant advantage. After consulting with President Novak and Captain Stark, James agreed to the deal. The UEF fleet, now armed with Shadowkin technology, launched its attack on the Ferengi supply station. The battle was fierce, losses heavy on both sides, but the UEF's superior technology and tactics won out. The station was destroyed, the Ferengi's supply lines shattered. News of the UEF's victory spread like wildfire throughout the galaxy. Many races began to question the Council's decision to support the Ferengi. Some even rallied behind the humans, seeing them as a force for justice in a corrupt galaxy. But the Ferengi were not ready to give up yet. They launched a brutal counterattack against the UEF, targeting human colonies and civilian populations. The war escalated, plunging the galaxy into chaos. The war raged across the stars, consuming entire systems in its wake. James Adams paced the command deck of the UEF flagship, his brow furrowed in thought. Captain Stark stood at his side, studying the holographic display of Ferengi space. 
We can't keep fighting them like this, James said. They're too strong. We need to end this war once and for all. Stark nodded. I agree, but how? James pointed at a glowing red dot on the map. There, Ferenginar, the heart of their empire. Intel suggests they're developing a new weapon there, something capable of destroying entire planets. Stark's eyes widened. If we could capture or destroy it... Fit could force them to surrender, James finished. But it won't be easy. Ferenginar is heavily defended. We'll need help, Stark said. Allies. James thought of the Shadowkin and the other races who had grown tired of the Council's lies. I have some ideas. They reached out across the stars, calling in favors and forging new alliances. Among them was Dr. Elias Vasco, a brilliant scientist with a secret project that could change everything. James and Stark met with Vasco on a remote research station. The scientist was jittery, his eyes darting around the room. I don't know about this, he said. My work, it's not ready. What is it? James asked. Vasco hesitated, then pulled up a schematic on his data pad. A new type of shield. It can absorb energy weapons and redirect them, make our ships virtually invulnerable. Stark leaned forward. But... But it's untested, Vasco said. I don't know if it will work in battle. James placed a hand on the scientist's shoulder. Dr. Vasco, this could be the key to ending the war, to bringing peace to the galaxy. We need your help. Vasco took a deep breath. All right, I'll do it, but I'll need time to install the shields on your ships. How long? Stark asked. A week, maybe two. James nodded. We'll buy you that time. As the UEF fleet prepared for the assault on Ferenginar, a message came through on an encrypted channel. James and Stark watched as a Ferengi face appeared on the screen. My name is Crag, the Ferengi said. I have information you need to hear. James leaned forward. Go on! Crag glanced over his shoulder, as if afraid of being overheard. The weapon on Ferenginar, it's not just a planet killer. It can destroy entire star systems. Stark cursed under his breath. There's more, Crag said. The Ferengi plan to use it to wipe out humanity and any other species that stand in their way. James felt a cold knot form in his stomach. When? Soon, Craig said. You must hurry. The transmission cut out, leaving James and Stark in stunned silence. We have to act now, James said, before it's too late. The UEF fleet, now equipped with Dr. Vasco's experimental shields, launched their surprise attack on Ferenginar. The shields worked better than anyone had dared hope allowing the human ships to punch through the Ferengi defences and strike at key targets across the planet. But the Ferengi were not caught completely off guard. A massive counterattack, led by Murloc himself, slammed into the UEF fleet. As the battle raged around them, James and Stark led a hand-picked team of elite soldiers on a desperate mission to infiltrate the Ferengi weapons facility and destroy their planet killer. They fought their way through waves of Ferengi warriors and deadly automated defences, finally reaching the heart of the complex. But there, waiting for them, stood Murloc and his personal guard. The Ferengi leader grinned, his sharp teeth glinting in the dim light. Welcome, humans, he said. You're just in time to witness the end of your pathetic species. James raised his weapon, his heart pounding in his chest. This was it. The final showdown. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. James charged at Murloc, his heart pounding in his chest. The Ferengi leader grinned, his teeth bared in a snarl. Their weapons clashed, sparks flying as they traded blows. Around them the battle raged on, UEF soldiers and Ferengi warriors locked in deadly combat. Captain Stark fought like a man possessed, his rifle spitting fire as he cut down Ferengi after Ferengi. But there were too many of them. A blast caught him in the chest, sending him sprawling to the ground. He struggled to rise, his breath coming in ragged gasps. James saw Stark fall out of the corner of his eye. Anger surged through him, fueling his attacks. He pressed forward, his blade a blur as he hacked and slashed at Murloc's defences. But the Ferengi was too fast, too strong. 
he parried James's attacks with ease, his own blade darting in to score hits on James's armor. James staggered back, his suit's system screaming warnings at him. He was outmatched and he knew it. Murloc laughed, his voice dripping with contempt. Is this the best the mighty humans can offer? He sneered. Pathetic. He lunged forward, his blade aiming for James's throat. James braced himself for the end. Suddenly a blinding flash of light erupted from James's suit. Murloc screamed as the energy engulfed him, his body disintegrating in the intense heat. His guards, too close to escape, met the same fate, their armor melting and their flesh vaporizing. James stared in shock as the light faded, leaving only a smoking crater where Murloc had stood. His suit's comm crackled to life. James, are you all right? It was Dr. Vasco, his voice tight with worry. James coughed, tasting blood in his mouth. I'm alive, Doc. What the hell was that? A fail-safe I built into the shield tech. It overloaded your shields, released all that pent-up energy. Murloc never stood a chance. James staggered to his feet, his head spinning. He looked around, saw his team mopping up the last of the Ferengi resistance. Captain Stark was being tended to by a medic, his face pale but his eyes alert. We need to finish this, James said. The planet killer... Go, Dr. Vasco said. I'll guide you from here. James stumbled through the wreckage of the facility, following Dr. Vasco's directions. He found the control room its screens showing the planet killer powering up. His fingers flew over the console, initiating the self-destruct sequence. But something was wrong. The system wouldn't accept his commands. He slammed his fist on the console in frustration. Damn it! They've got a fail-safe of their own! Dr. Vasco was silent for a moment. You'll have to override it manually, from inside the control room. James closed his eyes. He knew what that meant. He opened a channel to the UEF fleet. This is James Adams. The planet killer is armed and ready to fire. I'm initiating the self-destruct, but I won't be able to get out in time. Evacuate our forces and get to a safe distance. There was a pause. Then President Novak's voice filled the comm. James, are you sure about this? James smiled sadly. It's the only way, sir. It's been an honor serving with you. The honor was mine, James. Godspeed. James cut the channel. He recorded a final message for his family, his friends, for anyone who would listen. This is James Adams of the United Earth Federation. Today we struck a blow against tyranny and oppression. We showed the galaxy that humanity will not go quietly into the night, that we will fight for what we believe in, no matter the cost. I go now to my death, but I do so willingly, knowing that my sacrifice will help bring peace to the galaxy. To those I leave behind, know that I love you, and that I am proud to have been a part of something greater than myself. Remember me, but do not mourn me. Carry on the fight, in my name, and in the name of all those who fell. Goodbye. He sent the message, then turned to the consul. He took a deep breath and entered the final command. The facility shuddered as the self-destruct sequence began, James closed his eyes, picturing Earth, his home, his family. The facility exploded, a blinding flash of light that could be seen across the galaxy. On the UEF fleet, soldiers and civilians alike watched in silent awe as Ferenginar's surface was consumed by the blast. The war was over. The cost had been high, but humanity had prevailed. And though James Adams was gone, his legacy would live on, a shining beacon of hope and courage in a galaxy that so desperately needed it. The galaxy lay in ruins, a shattered remnant of its former self. The war against the Ferengi had taken a heavy toll, with countless worlds left devastated and billions of lives lost. But even in the face of such destruction, there was hope. The United Earth Federation, now the dominant power in the galaxy, worked tirelessly to rebuild what had been lost. President Novak stood before the UEF Council, his face lined with exhaustion, but his eyes shining with determination. We have a chance now to build something better, a galaxy where all species are equal, where justice and cooperation are the norm, not the exception. Captain Stark nodded in agreement. 
his own face bearing the scars of countless battles. He had seen firsthand the horrors of war, had lost friends and comrades to the Ferengi's ruthless onslaught, but he knew that their sacrifices had not been in vain. Together, Novak and Stark led the UEF in its efforts to forge a new galactic order. They reached out to the other species, offering aid and support in exchange for their cooperation. Many were hesitant at first, still nursing the wounds of the war and the betrayals that had preceded it. But slowly, tentatively, they began to come around. Not everyone was happy with the new status quo, however. There were those who resented the humans and their allies, who saw them as upstarts and usurpers. And there were those who sought to exploit the chaos and uncertainty for their own gain. One such group was the Phantom Collective, a shadowy organization that seemed to appear out of nowhere. Led by a mysterious figure known only as the Spectre, they carried out a series of brutal terrorist attacks across the galaxy, targeting key infrastructure and sowing fear and discord wherever they struck. Captain Stark was tasked with bringing the Phantom Collective to justice. He assembled a team of elite operatives from across the galaxy, each with their own unique skills and abilities. There was Zara, a fierce warrior from a proud warrior race, Reich, a brilliant hacker with a troubled past, and Jax, a grizzled veteran with a talent for infiltration and sabotage. Together they began to hunt the Phantom Collective, following the trail of destruction and chaos they left in their wake. They raided hidden bases, intercepted secret communications, and interrogated captured operatives. And with each new piece of the puzzle they uncovered, a disturbing picture began to emerge. The Phantom Collective, it seemed, was not acting alone. They were being funded and supplied by none other than the remnants of the Ferengi Empire, bitter and vengeful after their defeat at the hands of the UEF. Stark's team raced to uncover the Collective's plans. They discovered the location of their hidden base, where the Spectre was preparing a devastating attack that threatened to plunge the galaxy back into war. Stark led his team in a desperate assault on the base, fighting their way through waves of fanatical defenders. They took heavy casualties, but finally confronted the Spectre and his inner circle in a brutal final battle. Stark fought the Spectre in single combat, his augmented strength and speed barely a match for the terrorist leader's cybernetic enhancements. The two warriors clashed in a flurry of blows, neither giving quarter. In the end, Stark emerged victorious, standing over the Spectre's broken body. But his victory was short-lived, the base's self-destruct sequence had been activated, and the countdown had begun. Stark gave the order for his team to evacuate, but he had no intention of leaving himself. Someone needed to stay behind to buy time for the others to escape, just like James Adams had done not so long ago. Stark took a deep breath, steeling himself for what was to come. He thought of Adams, of the sacrifice he had made for the greater good, and he knew that he could do no less. As the explosions began to tear the base apart, Stark stood his ground, firing his weapon at the advancing Phantom Collective forces. His last thoughts were of his fallen comrades, and the hope that their sacrifices would not be in vain. In the aftermath of the Phantom Collective's defeat, the UEF redoubled its efforts to root out the remaining Ferengi loyalists and their sympathizers. It was a long and difficult process, but slowly, stability began to return to the galaxy. The story of James Adams and Alexander Stark, two heroes who had given their lives for the cause of peace and justice, became legend. Their names were spoken with reverence by those who had served with them, and their deeds inspired a new generation of leaders to take up the mantle of their cause. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.